Oh, hi there. Welcome to my channel. My name is Leah and I've got newfound curly wavy hair. Today we are going to talk about hair porosity and what that means for your hair care needs. About five months ago, I started on my own wavy hair journey when I found out about the curly girl method. I had always had kind of weird texture to my hair. It felt like it was straight in the front and had two very light waves in the back that I could not straighten out no matter what. Um, well, it turns out that five months later, this is actually the texture that was hiding in my hair. It's got a little ways to go yet, but I can definitely see that yeah, I don't have straight hair at all. So if you're just starting out on your curly hair journey or just hair care journey in general, you're probably gonna hear the terms high porosity, low porosity, and medium porosity while you're kind of exploring around and looking for products. Hair porosity as a definition really is your hair's ability to absorb moisture and hold on to it. And that comes from the actual like cuticle and um, shape of your hair's texture. Hair porosity is actually determined by the shaft and the cuticle of your hair. Um, what it is is the way that your hair um, cuticle stays open or closed. I'll put a picture right here of the three different types. Starting with high porosity, that means that your hair cuticle is really open. So. I mean, your hair shaft grows down this way, but my hands point this way. So pretend this is the way your hair grows. So if you have high porosity hair, that means that the cuticle is really open. And so it's got a lot of holes and gaps in it, which means it's really great at absorbing moisture. Moisture really gets in and gets underneath your cuticle, but it stays open. So it's not great at retaining that moisture. And then low porosity is pretty much the exact opposite. It stays really closed and tight together. So it doesn't really absorb moisture very easily. It stays like this, so moisture, you know, maybe a little bit like this. So moisture doesn't get in very easily, but once it's there, it stays there. So this can be a whole different set of issues and um, needs that your hair has. And the medium is kind of, you know, right in between. It'll absorb some moisture and it'll hold on to it pretty well. It would be nice if everybody had medium porosity hair. So your hair porosity can actually change over the course of your um, treatment of your hair. Porosity can be due to things like genetics and just the way your hair is, or it can also be from the treatment of your hair. So lots of heat styling, lots of chemical treatments is going to kind of blow out your cuticle and make it open in high porosity. So it is actually really possible for somebody who's been kind of taking care of their hair to have low porosity hair up here and high porosity hair down here. Now we know what hair porosity is, what it looks like when you look at your hair up close, how it kind of um, works as far as moisture goes, but how do you know what you have? There's three really easy ways to kind of test your hair porosity. Um, the first one is, I think the most effective, it's really easy. All you need is two things, a piece of your hair and a cup. The hair that you need for this test needs to be clean and without any product on it. So for me, the best thing to do is just grab a piece of hair right after you're done shampooing in the shower, or if you're like me, just grab it off of the wall when you're done with your shower. And then you're gonna take a cup and fill it with, you know, it doesn't have to be all the way up, but enough with water. Like if you're using a venti Starbucks cup, for example, about halfway is just fine. Make sure it's room temperature water. Um, so what you'll do is you'll take your strand of hair and drop it into the water and then make sure you tap on it to break the surface tension of the water um, because what you're gonna do is see if your hair floats or sinks to the bottom. Once you put your hair in the cup and break that surface tension, just set it down and walk away for a few minutes. I have about five, should be fine. When you come back, if your hair is still floating on the top of the water and not stuck to the sides, um, you likely have low porosity hair. That means that it didn't let any of the moisture in and it stayed there floating on top of the water. If it's sunk, you've probably got high porosity hair. That means that the cuticle's open, it sucked up all of that water and sunk to the bottom of the cup. Um, like I said, this is the really easiest way and I think it's pretty effective. So the next test, you don't have to really do anything except grab a little strand of your hair. Um, again, clean is the best way to do it. So you would grab a strand of your hair, pinch it and pull up on this way. If you hear it squeak and you don't feel any um, lumps or bumps or um, texture at all, you've probably got low porosity hair if it's very, very smooth. If you can feel some bumps in texture, um, it's probably high porosity because that's the cuticle open and you can feel that. And if it's closed, it's going to be really smooth. And finally, another easy test is a spray bottle test. You would have a spray bottle filled with water and if you spray your hair, and it beads up and doesn't soak into the hair, you've probably got low porosity hair. If it soaks in right away, you've probably got high porosity hair. Or, you know, of course, anywhere somewhere in between would be medium. 
Some other indicators of your hair type would be if you have low porosity hair, you probably get a lot of buildup and you think your hair feels really greasy really quickly, but it's probably product buildup because it can't soak into your hair. Um, if you have low porosity hair, it takes a while for the water to get in, but once it's in, it takes forever to dry. And then the opposite for high porosity hair. If you feel like you need like a ton of product for it to even get in and do anything for your hair, it's probably high porosity. And if you feel like you can wash your hair in a snap because it soaks up water really quick, but it also gets really dry when you dry it, um, you've probably got high porosity hair. Okay, now that you know your porosity type, hopefully from one of those tests, what do you need to do to really take care of your hair? If you have low porosity hair, protein is not going to be your friend. It leads to a lot of product buildup and makes your, it'll stretch out your curls and just make your hair feel kind of yucky and gross. Um, so kind of avoid products that have protein or a lot of added protein in them. You should be able to find that in, um, on the product labels on the back. Because low porosity hair is more difficult to get moisture into, use really moisturizing natural ingredients such as jojoba oil, shea butter, coconut oil, or even mineral oil. And when you're searching for products, look for things that are lighter. You don't want something that's really heavy and gonna weigh down your hair because it's gonna sit on top of your hair and pull it down and make it feel really not very good. And along those lines, you'll probably need to cleanse more often. I know a lot of people with low porosity and low porosity wavy hair need to do a deep cleanse at least every other week, sometimes even once a week. I personally like to use a really light, low poo shampoo and shampoo my hair every time I take a shower. And if you've got medium porosity hair, you've kind of got issues from both ends of the spectrum. Um, it's a little bit easier to take care of medium porosity hair, but you do need to watch out for a few things. You'll want to avoid using protein in your daily regimen. So like protein-free shampoos and daily conditioners would be for you, but then you'll also want to periodically do a deep condition with a protein-based mask. And for my high porosity gang, if you've got a high porosity hair, you can use a bunch of really great natural products that are anti-humectants that can really help keep your hair tangle free and frizz free, especially in the humid times of year. You can use raw oils like shea butter, extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, even palm oil if you want to. I know that there are a few environmental issues with that, so look for sustainably sourced organic palm oil. It is really one of the best oils out there and find a really good leave-in conditioner that you like. This is really gonna help keep your hair moisturized and keep that moisture in instead of letting it fall out right away because a conditioner will help to close your cuticle down a little bit and having a leave-in conditioner really helps lock in that moisture as much as possible. All right, so that was our quick chat about hair porosity. I hope you guys found this really helpful. This was one of the biggest things that I had to tackle for my hair personally because I just couldn't find a product that was working well for me. But when I figured out my porosity, I learned which products were best for my hair and it made a world of difference. So if this helped you guys, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. We're gonna chat about all sorts of stuff, hair, makeup, whatever we want to. All right, you guys, have a super great rest of your day and we'll talk to you next video. Bye, 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 bye.